Hey guys, Raven here. If you notice my hair is gone. Um, I got tired of looking at the gray hairs that I had. And they're gone. So last night I said I wanted to make a, a Thursday Dirtbag story video. And this has to do with the time when um, I was little. And, by the way, you know, there's a lot of traffic going up down the road, so if you hear any noises in the background, that's what it, what it is, like another one just went by. Um, when I was little, I uh, didn't start walking until I was five. And I had surgery done at the John Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore. And, um, so I want to say I was around seven years old when I did this. Around seven. Maybe eight. I can't remember exactly how old I was. But, it's hard to believe that's been over 30 years. Wow. Um, so, I was at John Hopkins Hospital one day for physical therapy. I was walking by then, but I still had surgeries that I needed to have done in order to be able to walk. Because remember, I have cerebral palsy. And as I stated in videos where I had viral meningitis, in which um, I got when I was six weeks old. You know, it, it affected everything, uh, my eyesight, my hearing. Uh, the, way, the way my voice sounds. So, I figure, you know, but now that I've explained all of that, I don't have to be so shy about making YouTube videos. Because I've already explained the situation of how, why my voice sounds the way it does. So anyway, getting back to the story. So I had a physical therapy one uh, appointment at John Hopkins Hospital one day. Which was normally done at the Kennedy Institute, which is now known as the Kennedy Krager Institute. And, um, so we had to go over to John Hopkins for some reason. I can't remember why, but my appointment wasn't there. It was, um, it was the, the appointment was at the Kennedy Institute. I'm calling it Kennedy Institute, uh, right now because that's what it was called back then and I don't know when they changed the name to Kennedy Krager um so we had lunch at the big cafeteria that's probably why we went there uh because they have a big cafeteria I don't know if they still do or not um but it was a big cafeteria we get our lunch you know me and my mom would you know sit down and um eat our meal. So we ate our meal, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, you could see a lot of uh, doctors coming in, um, some of them were college students, um, maybe in other employees or, um, or people who just got done with their appointments and are coming to have lunch. So, it was a variety of people that were there. And, um, so my mom said to me, as we got done eating, we went to go take the, you know, the, the tra you know, the trays and put it in the trash. Like you would do at McDonald's or Chipotle or something, you know. And my mom said, stay right here, I'm going to go over there and put this in the trash. Well, what did I do? I ran off. I ran off and I was all over the place. And my mom came back and realized I'm not where I was supposed to be. And so she comes, uh, she's crying. Uh, you know, she's hysterical by this point. Not knowing where I'm at. And so I was running all through the halls, unattended. Uh, the security guard noticed uh, 
I was by myself, but I don't think uh, he thought much of it. He probably thought I was just running to a family member or something. So, uh, I just went, was doing my thing. Remember, I am seven years old at this point. And I'm doing what any kid would do. Run around, get into things, you know. Um, for me, I was enjoying the fact that I was walking. You know, because I didn't start walking until I was five. So, or about five, I should say. Finally, you know, like after about what well, had to be the longest uh, 15 minutes of my mother's life. When she found me and I found her. My mom had, you know, she went to security. She had the whole place locked down. You know, locked the door because they couldn't find me. And nobody was getting in and nobody was getting out. That's the protocol. That's the way it's supposed to be. And finally, I found my mom. And I said to her, Mom, did you get lost again? Oh, uh, my mom, she, oh boy. She wanted to beat my little honey uh, when I said that. But because she was so happy, and finding me, she never went, went forward with it. And you know, that's the thing. My mom has never spanked me. Never. But my, my dad has. And, but when he done it, he did it too excessive. He didn't know when enough was enough. And he would just, which is part of the reason why, you know, I have a hard time walking now. My dad, in a way, is to blame for this a little bit. So, um, because one time my dad did, you know, something that I didn't do. He claimed that I didn't do anything. And, you know, what it was, I remember, I was, I said something and I was saying it in a joking manner. My mom got it, but my dad didn't. And my dad didn't like it, and so he turned me across the thing and uh, spanked me, and that made my legs shake. Because keep in mind, I have cerebral palsy. That made my legs shake. And my mom said to him from that point on, and let me remind, this was 1993. Um, I'm a little older, the, uh, I mean, this many years later the, from the. Um, from the John Hopkins incident. But, um, when my dad's, uh, January of 93, excuse me, <coughs> and, um, knowing that my legs were shaking from thinking that I just got, my mom grabbed me out of his hands. And told him to stop. And then she looked at him and she said, You are never putting your hands on my son again. Um, my little sister, she says, And she's crying. She didn't like what she saw either. Um, so, my mom said, If you want to ground him, that's fine. But do not put your hands on him. You know he's got cerebral palsy, and yet you, you didn't take any regard for that. And um, my dad proceeded to tell me that I was grounded for a week. And my mom spoke up and said, "No, he's not grounded. He was telling some. He was talking to me, telling me a joke, and you took it the wrong way. So no, he's not grounded. And and by the way." And she spanked him the way he did. That's punishment enough. And but that's it. You know. I'm not going to say the word. Because I hate that word. But he said. The other part. Um, I'm trying to keep this. You know. 
uh, Radio G friendly, uh, but this three probably Radio PG. So my dad never did hit me again after that until Christmas Day, 1996. But that's for another day. That's a story for another day. But I wanted to talk about how the time where I ran off at John Hopkins University and my mom had to t tell them to lock all doors because uh, there was a missing child, which was me. But my sister, um, with, with my mom at Walmart. I wasn't with them that day. And, um, keep in mind, there's a 10 year difference between me and my sister. Well, nine, year, nine, nine years and 11 and a half months, but rounded off to 11, uh, uh to 10 years. Um, my mom and my sister were at Walmart one time. And I think my sister was like about 10, 11 years old, you know. So, figured my sister was running off into toys while my mom was getting other things. And, well, my mom couldn't find my sister uh, after a while. Uh, thought maybe she was in the bathroom and she wasn't. And so she had Walmart go into uh, Code Amber. And that's where they shut down all the uh, lot, all the doors. The way it's getting in and the way it's getting out. And then they eventually found my sister. So, me and my sister, uh, you know, uh, uh, have been the cause of places shutting down where, you know, we're with our mother, you know. So, but I wasn't with my mom that day. <laughs> If I had been, uh, I don't think the need for the code Amber would have been, had to been initiated. Because I would have kept a watchful eye on my sister. So, um, but now the, my, uh, the, the, there's not going to be a third child because my mom can't have any more kids anyway. She had her tube signed after my sister was born. Uh, she had an upper pregnancy. So, <laughs> Um, that's why through those first eight plus years of my life, I kept begging my mom to, um, have another kid. She didn't want any. I was going to be the only one if she had her way. Um, she did tell me one time, though, in between the time I was born and my sister was born, that she did carry twins at one time, but she miscarried and I never knew that, and, um, but she didn't know it either until, uh, it was too late. Mm. I'm tired. I don't know why I got a good decent sleep last night. Maybe I need more. But anyway, that was my th third day to back story I wanted to tell for today. Um. Next week, I am going to tell another one. I don't know, uh, there, there's quite a few of them that I can think, uh, that I think I'm going to tell. But, when I, figure, when, when I figure out the topic of what it's going to be, I will put it in the, in the video that I post between that and then. <laughs> Man, I think I should end the video here because I keep yawning. Uh, and I got company coming here at uh, 2 o'clock. So, um, part of the reason for the company coming at 2 is I stated I have a mice problem. And, well, the mouse trap that my landlord gave me didn't even work, it, it, it failed miserably. Yesterday, I accidentally set off one of the mail tra uh, mouse traps, and um, that's my fault there. And then there, yeah, but the other one I haven't set in location where I thought you know he would 
he might run. That one failed miserably as well, and it's a brand new one. We put peanut butter on it, yet the mouse was able to eat the peanut butter without setting the trap off. I don't get it. Uh, you know, this mouse is probably too smart for its own good, so I have company coming over 2 o'clock for, uh, to kind of help address that and for other reasons, so, um, I don't know if I'm going to put up another video today. This might be my one and only, uh, video for today. Unless I see something where I want to make a video of. We'll do that. So I have, hope you have a good rest of your Thursday, November 21st to 2019. So have a good day. Peace.